Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Lake MRI, and this is a 28-year-old female who had a normal MRI of her thoracic spine. She had had severe onset of back pain, uh, could barely move, and came in just to make sure she did not have a disc herniation, and her spine looked nice and normal. And so we believe she just had some muscle spasm, so she's going to a doctor to get some treatment for that, and knowing that she does not have any herniated disc or any compression deformity or any other findings. But we noticed something incidental on her, and it's not uncommon to see little incidental findings. And in her, this may be more important than usual. This is the thyroid gland, and it looks like it's too large. And we can see the thyroid gland on this study of the thoracic spine, just on the edge of the image here, but also we do an MRI of the cervical spine, just a more limited view just to count the segments. So we have to count down from the cervical spine, the neck, to see where we are and so, so we can count the vertebral segments. So in this one, we get kind of a free look of the cervical spine. and We also see the neck soft tissues and we see this big thyroid gland. So we call this a thyroid goiter or hyperplasia of the thyroid gland. And so she has a normal thoracic spine, but if we go on up here, we're going to find the thyroid gland in the short axis images here. This is where we see it best. This is at the very top, so the images fall off. We don't see them, but right there we catch it. And we see the thyroid gland is this tissue right here. It's like a horse's um, saddle, and it drapes over this middle thing here. This is the horse. This is the trachea, the airway. And again, the thyroid tissue is this. In the middle and over here. And now on the right side, I have a measurement of 2.8 centimeters from front to back. Normally, the thyroid gland will be less than two centimeters, so this is much, much too large. And the thyroid isthmus, which is right in between the left and right lobes, is right here. This should be less than three millimeters. We can see this is much too large, so this is one centimeter more than three times too big and there's some little areas of darkness and little areas of subtle increase signal. These are little thyroid nodules and so she has nodular thyroid hyperplasia or a goiter. Now in the United States it's uncommon to have iodine deficiency because we have iodinated salt but in other countries people have low iodine intake can develop thyroid goiters because the thyroid gland needs um, the iodine to make the hormones. If it doesn't get them in the diet, then it'll grow large to try to make the thyroxine. In the United States, that's pretty uncommon, and we see it here from um, autoimmune diseases, more likely like a Graves disease or um, also Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And in Hashimoto's, the, the thyroid gland can be overactive or underactive, depending on the phase. So this patient is going to need to see their doctor to try to get a diagnosis of uh, what is causing this and see if the thyroid gland is overactive or underactive. Oftentimes, they'll do a thyroid uptake and scan as well, where they put nuclear medicine material, radioactive iodine, and the gland will pick that up. And we'll be able to see if they have an overactive nodule that's causing the gland to be enlarged or if it's just diffuse uptake, meaning there's no hyperactive nodule. That can also show thyroid function if it's overactive or underactive. And also sometimes we'll do scans with ultrasound to look at the thyroid gland and see the nodules and follow up the nodules to make sure none of them grow because uh, sometimes nodules can grow larger and they can uh, um, be malignant. So this is just an early finding here. It's definitely enlarged multinodular, and the patient needs to go to their primary care doctor and have this worked up fully and then uh, followed. And that's it. Thank you so much.